The following is from a book review and analysis video I made on Narrative of the Life of Frederick Douglass. The book is an autobiographical account of Frederick Douglass's upbringing in slavery and his escape from slavery. This clip covers some of the many passages within that are full of valuable historical and philosophical information. Please enjoy and may your conversations related to racism and the history of slavery be made better by watching. Now this next section in the analysis portion of this video is titled Satanically Perverted Religion. Throughout this book, Frederick Douglass makes several attacks on the religion that he experienced while in slavery. Uh, so much so that for a portion of the book I was like, hmm, is Frederick Douglass a, you know, you know, is he somewhat anti-Christianity? It was somewhat confusing because he would make religious references of, uh, you know, uh, Christianity being a good thing, and then would turn around and just absolutely abhor and denigrate the religion of the, the, the people uh, that enslaved him who also considered themselves to be Christians. And so I was like, hmm, I feel like there's, I, 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 I remember thinking, I hope that, you know, he answers this and, and kind of clarifies his position on religion and specifically Christianity because it seems like there are some conflicting ideas here. And, well, little did I know, the appendix of this book is entirely devoted to uh, Frederick Douglass's thoughts on what he believes is true Christianity and uh, fraudulent Christianity. And uh, so I'm going to read some of these passages here, and I think you're going to get a really good picture of... Uh, you know, what Frederick Douglass's religious beliefs were, and I think you will agree with him on his critiques of the religion uh, that he experienced uh, growing up in slavery, because the religion that he experienced growing up in slavery, as he says, was not really Christianity at all. What I have said respecting and against religion, I mean strictly to apply to the slaveholding religion of this land, and with no possible reference to Christianity proper, for between the Christianity of this land and the Christianity of Christ, I recognize the widest possible difference, so wide that to receive the one as good, pure, and holy is of necessity to reject the other as bad, corrupt, and wicked. To be the friend of the one is of necessity to be the enemy of the other. I love the pure, peaceable, and impartial, impartial Christianity of Christ. I therefore hate the corrupt, slave-holding, women-whipping, cradle-plundering, partial and hypocritical Christianity of this land. Indeed, I can see no reason but the most deceitful one for calling the religion of this land Christianity. I look upon it as the climax of all misnomers, the boldest of all frauds, and the grossest of all libels." He did not hate Christianity. He was not anti-Christian. In fact, he was a Christian. What he hated was what he saw the, preser the, the, the perverted version of it, the slaveholding religion. That's what he hated. Um, and uh, I think you will see here, as we read uh, from uh, earlier in the book, uh, just how perverted it was and how evil it was to have Christianity essentially hijacked by a bunch of psychopaths who would quote different verses uh, and uh, things from the Bible as an excuse uh, to be evil. I have said my master found religious sanction for his cruelty. As an example, I will state one of many facts going to prove the charge. I have seen him tie up a lame young woman and whip her with a heavy cowskin upon her naked shoulders, causing the warm red blood to drip. And in justification of this bloody deed, he would quote this passage of scripture, he that knoweth his master's will and doeth it not shall be beaten with many stripes. Frederick Douglass talked about how the worst slave owners, the worst overseers that he encountered in his time as a slave were the religious ones. And I thought, wow, what is that? What is that about that? What it is, in my opinion, and I think Frederick Douglass uh, uh, essentially uh, believed the same thing, is uh, the religious, whenever you have a book, when you have the Bible, when you have you know, the Bible's a wild book. It's so big. You know, you can pull certain things from here and you can almost and put them over here and you can kind of build your own conception 
uh, you can kind of use the Bible to, to, as a justification for whatever it is you want to do if you are a dishonest reader. And the slave owners and overseers, they used the Bible in that way and they were particularly cruel to their slaves because they thought that God was on their side. And it gave them that long sought justification for what they were doing. Um, it's pretty obvious, I must say, when you actually read the whole Bible, that American slavery was not at all <laughs> what the Bible was talking about regarding slavery. Uh, I highly recommend that you read uh, or don't read this because uh, you can't read it. It's a video. Uh, there's a guy, a really good Christian YouTuber. He's a black guy named, uh, his channel's called What Do You Meme? I'll leave a couple videos in the description of this video where he goes through uh, slavery in the Bible. He primarily focuses on the Old Testament, uh, but he, uh, you know, he kind of talks about the Bible as a whole regarding slavery because there are several passages in the Bible, in the Old Testament and the New Testament, where if you read them out of context, or if you read them with the 21st century American understanding of slavery, you could come to the conclusion that the Bible did sanction the kind of slavery that was allowed in America. But as this really good YouTuber uh, shows, that is most definitely not the case. Now, the actual form of slavery within the Bible, as what you meme explains, is quite different uh you know it's it's odd you know it's it's kind of weird uh morally to to think about but it is not uh and, and the youtuber goes into it but it is not what frederick Douglass was describing here uh in, in america the chattel slavery of america the the justification that slave owners and uh and uh, you know, masters used you know when they quoted verses like the one that Frederick Douglass cited, uh, that it was a dishonest justification. And I think that um, the "What do you mean?" his videos that I'll leave in the description of this video uh, really show that very clearly. Frederick Douglass in this passage and in pretty much the whole appendix really illustrates how twisted and evil, how tricky, how like it was almost like. I mean, it was almost like these people were under a spell. Wow, like, slavery was, it really was this horrible thing. And, and the fact that the, the Christian church was so corrupted by it is perhaps the most horrifying thing of all. Uh, because of course, Christianity is all about, uh, you know, freedom and liberation from, you know, uh, sins and compassion from, and all that sort of stuff. Um, but, you know, this here shows that, uh, the very people that preach that sort of thing, where Frederick Douglass grew up, were the very same people that put him in chains. They would be shocked at the proposition of fellowshipping a sheep stealer, and at the same time they hug to their communion a man stealer, and brand me with being an infidel if I find fault with them for it. They attend with pharisaical strictness to the outward forms of religion, and at the same time neglect the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. They are always ready to sacrifice, but seldom to show mercy. They are they who are represented as professing to love God whom they have not seen, whilst they hate their brother whom they have seen. They love the heathen on the other side of the globe. They can pray for him, pay money to have the Bible put into his hand, and missionaries to instruct him, while they despise and totally neglect the heathen at their own doors. Damn.